My name is Steve Beebe. I'm a bean breeder and bean team leader for SEAT in Cali, Colombia. Uh, we're responsible for bean research in both Latin America and Africa in support of national programs in both continents. We've been doing our phenotyping in Colombia largely, but the Tropical Legumes One project also permitted us to extend our phenotyping into Africa and in close collaboration with, with Tropical Legumes Two. Uh, my name is uh, Asrat Asu Mele. I work uh, uh, for Sari South Agriculture Research Institute and based at Awasa Station. Well, in the uh, area I'm working, we have some uh, Moist, dry, or dry to like some humid environments, and it's plain. And uh, some part of it's plain, and the other part, especially when we, grow, we farmers are growing beans, to have some undulating topography also. And we are in the southern part of Rift Valley. My name is Roland Chirwa. I work for SEAT. SEAT is the International Center for Tropical Agriculture. Uh, the headquarters in Colombia, but we have some uh, Africa offices. Beans are an important crop, the most important grain legume in Latin America, and the most important grain legume in, in eastern southern Africa. Uh, our program in both continents seek, seeks to address both biotic and abiotic stresses. Tropical legume, one project is very pertinent to us uh, because it's uh, majorly focused on uh, Andean beans, the large seeded beans. Okay. So these beans are much more liked in our target environment and uh, it led us to know about the molecular breeding. So it exposed us to new development in science, especially in application of uh, molecular techniques and plant breeding. My particular coverage is southern part of Africa, focusing on the crop of the common bean. And there is so many countries in southern part of Africa, bean is considered as an important food legume, but also a cash earner for most of the small scale farmers that produce the crop. And the, the productivity at farm level is low. We are trying to produce more resilient varieties that meet the market requirements as well as the nutrition and food security requirements so that people can benefit from them. And our work, we work with the national programs. So we have breeders uh, in countries where there is capacity for breeding, but also in other countries where there's no breeding programs, we provide them with germplasm at network level. Declare uh, maturity time. And also, uh, yeah, as you know, here, um, most of the materials are uh, planted in fragmented land, and also beans are uh, grown in marginal areas. So they look for uh, those materials which can perform uh, under poor soils. So uh, that is also one big uh, selection criteria for them. We have the same five programs in Africa working with us in Ethiopia, uh, Kenya, Tanzania, Malawi and Zimbabwe. And under these two projects we sought to establish a regional uh, cooperation on drought research uh, amongst, these, amongst these five programs. Establishing phenotypics, phenotyping sites uh, in, several of the, in several of the countries, training uh, technicians and, and professionals, researchers, in, in drought research. We've always felt that it's very important to train technicians because often those are the, the workhorses who are, who are out in the field and who are actually getting the results that, that carry research forward. Yeah, there is capacity building 
link tier one linked with tier two and also linked with the GCP we've built some capacity both in terms of infrastructure as well as uh, human capacity development yeah, some of the physical infrastructure like I said already uh, they provided some uh, uh, equipment for the labs uh, in some cases we have provided irrigation facilities which c now can enhance the breeders to be able to select for drought tolerance because they can plant a crop with and without irrigation and impose uh, drought conditions uh, without relying on rainfall per se. In our breeding program, like uh, we are still one, the first thing is capacity building. The scientists as the in national system get exposed to the new technology and, and also we got information, training, so we have some uh, so the other thing, like with this, no, I think it's, a, it's, it's a, the base is TL1, but we have some projects from GCP Center Development. So we'll have uh, a full irrigation system for all about all about uh, 10 hectare of land. So that uh, will revolutionize our evaluation proce process. Like we can do uh, manage the stress as we like. So. We got such support, so that's an impact for our system. The network of partners in this project has been very good, and the, it is in line with the way we operate. Like I said, within Africa, particularly working on beans, we work as networks. So there's one for Southern Africa, there's another one for Eastern Central Africa, and another one for West Africa. So networking is actually part of our strategy in our program. I think it's designed nicely because we are now actively participating with uh, international organizations like uh, the city centers and uh, so the, this is a good way because GCP is supporting in many directions and we are getting technical uh, backstopping from the city centers so as a national partner we are doing also the, the work and they are supplying germplasm so um, it will be okay like if that's the partnership continue in the future uh, the major lesson is teamwork because you involve a lot of different partners from different background and you share information and uh, uh, even knowledge i find that very very grateful and besides the tools developed through tier one are supposed to be used in tier two and that's making not them not just theoretical, but putting them into practice. Yeah, like if we start working with what we have already obtained from GCP, like the, the capacity building, the training and the materials we obtain, so still we can make uh, use of those physical material as well, capacity as well as the human to create some impact in our research system. Yeah, the future impacts are there and uh, in particular uh, there has been some links uh, with the GCP and they, they try to assist some of the national programs with uh, the facilities for them to get involved into use of molecular markers as well as now we're talking about uh, some platforms or community of practice where the national breeders do not necessarily have to have a molecular lab to use the molecular tools. So that, I think, is a big step forward. Well, I think intermediate impacts, which are really coming on board right now, uh, include the marker-assisted selection. Well, first for biotic stresses, uh, common bacterial blight, uh, storage insects, uh, viral, viral resistance genes. We're moving into larger scales uh, marker-assisted selection this year, in fact. So in, ter in research terms, impact will be expanding this year. Uh, obviously, the real impact, the, real, the impact that really matters is in farmer fields, and that's when we get 
uh, new varieties on farm uh, with farmers and really proven to, to address you know, the limitations of production that farm families face.